welcome to the Starting Word Podcast. I'm your host, Edward Sheldon, aka Dark Logos. And this is a show where we look at strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. Uh, I know most of you are wondering, uh, or, or even thinking to uh, yourself, uh, I thought he was dead. Or more so of, uh, where where has uh, where have you been? What What's going on? Why hasn't there been a video in like six months? Uh, what happened? Okay, so there's there's a lot of stuff that's gone on. Uh, a lot of personal stuff, a lot of family stuff. Uh, some things, uh, in short, uh, it's like, well, one, uh, I, I was getting planning on getting married um, at early 2021. So I, I knew that was coming. Um, I moved, most folks know, I moved from Tulsa and, and everything else uh, to, to get ready, you know, for all the stuff uh, that's going on uh, to, to get married. Uh, uh, there was a couple other reasons why I moved. And one of those is I have a daughter. And so uh, the daughter was established before the, the get married part. I just want to let folks know that. I'm sorry, I'm afraid the, the daughter was established after the get married part, not before that. It makes it sound bad then. Uh, and so uh, a good chunk of my time up until November was getting ready for, uh, you know, having a daughter and, and all the things that come along with it, uh, especially little babies running around or not running around, but. That, that's an issue. Um, then going on uh, a bit further of the job that I have is is way more exhausting than my previous job. And I partly, I partly to blame some of the stress from getting paid really, really poorly uh, at, at being a public school teacher, uh, well, substitute teacher. Uh, to sort of put some things in context, if if I don't substitute, I make a thousand dollars for. Uh, actually, I think I make less than a thousand dollars. I make like nine hundred and eighty something uh, for two weeks worth of work. Uh, that is, uh, you know, bearing if I don't substitute. If if I substitute, uh, I can put as much as uh, another three hundred or four hundred dollars. Uh, onto my books, like like I'm in jail or something. Uh, what what does that mean? Uh, I sort of have spent a lot more time working on my my economics, so to speak, uh, because that matters. And um, I'm stuck dealing with a reality um, that I I don't think uh, a lot of folks have sort of clearly stated to you when you're in that that world of uh, you, you would deem as equality uh, between the genders. This is that it's still, regardless of uh, income disparity between the two, uh, you as a man are required to, to provide, regardless of what the shenanigans say in the, the narrative. Uh, and so, uh, you know, trying to do that, um, trying to figure stuff out, uh, I've spent more time hustling and understanding economics uh, than I did previously. And I spent a good amount of money on classes and other stuff. Uh, I am my own financial advisor, not yours. <laughs> uh, and, and if folks would be like, I want you to make money, in, want you to make money in the stock uh Dark Logos, make me some money. I'd, I'd be like, uh, no. Uh, because uh, brother was doing big pimping, um, like really good for what little money I did have until about uh, October last year. And then it went from, from big pimping to uh, okay. Uh, and then from okay to oh my gosh, and from oh my gosh to dear Lord, she coming. 
so there's been some things where I've lost uh, a good amount of money on. Uh, Ukraine, that sort of hit, I feel like. It hit everybody equally. There's no person that was like, oh, yeah, I was, I, I was ready for it. Like, you may have suspected, but your your platform wasn't ready for that type of hit. Like, let's let's be 100. You might have thought there was a dip, but you weren't going to think like you're going to lose that much. Um, but there's some other things that I knew in the world, and I somewhat said previously, that, that have come into effect, and I don't necessarily look like Nostradamus uh, because they're blatantly obvious things, but I do look more like a little bit like Noah, you know, it's like, ah, oh, man, he's an idiot until it's like, oh, crap, where's the boat? You know, like, how, how do I get out of here? Uh, and so there's there's that. And then I've also sort of realized, too, uh, there's there's been a couple of different shows that I've wanted to make, but I, I haven't. And I've talked with my teammates about it. And part of that comes in is... When there is no stakes, what what are you fighting for? Now, I know some of you are going to say, what do you mean no stakes? You know, I get dinner all the time. But uh, in the terms of the competitive scene right now, there is no stakes. Um, your, your, your local group is the stakes. Oh, but... But Dark Logos Rock is back. Yeah, it's sort of back. It's not full swing. Okay. Uh, look, WizKids is going to have Worlds, which they haven't announced the date in a very, uh, let's just say, uh, I, I don't think I can sugar, sugarcoat it. It's unprofessional. It's very unprofessional uh, that it was all sort of initially revealed because Howard was talking about stuff. That's the only neat reason we initially knew that there was going to be a world. And then once everything is sort of confirmed, you don't know the date. Like you think folks have two or three months just to get the money together uh, to pop up and show up to your event because, you know, hot dog, the, the boys are back in town. Um, I'm sorry, this isn't 2019. Like the, the world has changed. Money has changed. Everybody's lifestyle has changed. I mean, like, let's let's be 100 about this. And for WizKids to think and even have the audacity to think that, hey, we can we could continue to pull the same jank uh, is a problem. It's 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 a major problem because as a, a leader well, let me phrase this. It's not necessarily as a leader. As the one that organizes the game for us to a degree, uh, their ability to show positive initiative is is greatly lacking. And I, and I could take the time and crack on Zoran and blah, blah, blah and say all the stuff that I, I, I would want to say and be like, blah, 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 Zoran is the devil. And And even if that is true or not, what it comes down to is where is NECA and, and what are the limitations NECA are putting on whiz kids? Uh, because I'm going to tell you 100% being a person. Um, I, I also brought this up on my, on this show before, if anyone remembers, I, I mentor boys, uh, like high school and middle school boys. And I run an RPG of my own making, but I follow what goes on in D and D. And I got to say, uh, what's up with kids? Now, I can make the argument it's Hasbro's. So maybe Hasbro's has a lot more in-house uh, cool stuff that they're doing. But I, I just end up watching D&D Direct and I saw the, the WizKids uh, miniature advertisement and I'm thinking to myself, uh, why don't we have anything equivalent to this? Why is it there uh, advertisements on YouTube for WizKids products? Why are we 
like when we are offered advertisements uh, for our, the products that are being offered, why are we getting something lackluster than what uh, Wizards of the Coast is getting? And it sort of shows me that WizKids as a company is more than fine because of D&D. Uh, Heroclix, and it's something that a lot of people have wished for, is no longer the bread and butter of WizKids. It's D&D. And, the, and, and that's fine. Trust me, man. I'm not, I'm not hating on that uh, reality. But it does mean that we are now sort of the the redheaded stepchild. Yeah, we're the one that brought you, that got you to the dance. Uh, but beyond that, uh, that's it. You know, we don't care. So, and and I think that's the issue that I have uh, with Wiz Kids. <laughs> Is that uh, they they don't well anyway I'm I'm not going to go into respect but because WizKids is got the D and D arm and it's fully roided up uh, and they'll say like we're a small company we're a small company you can get your your uh, Vox Machina stuff on time. You can get your Critical Role stuff out on time. You can make sure that that stuff is in the warehouse. You can make sure that you can get all your D&D supplements and stuff up, all those ducks in a row. Why can't you do it with, with Heroclix? And if anybody is gonna say, uh, but the warehouse and the shipping, I'm like, yo, um, same factory to my knowledge. It's just a different approach, or better yet, different priorities. You you put D and D as a priority. Now again, from a business perspective, you know, play on player, you know, play the song, let it roll. But but don't come back later and being like, we got a shortage here, we have these things here, we have these problems here. The the I, I'll say this: WizKids out at themselves. They out at themselves because. When I, that D&D Direct, and, and really, in all honesty, just overall, from me watching other uh, D&D YouTubers, has made me sort of angry at WizKids. Uh, because how they treat the D&D individuals is way better than how they treat Heroclix players or Heroclix personalities. Because um, I, I watched this guy... I really like his content called Nerd Immersion. And and again, you could tell if you are around uh, D&D YouTube, um, you know, you, you should recognize that name. Also, Nerdarchy. Nerdarchy is another one. Okay, when I look at the content that Nerdarchy puts out and the number of views that they get, and they'll get early access to stuff like a month early before uh it comes out okay and and they're like oh hey our friends over at whiz kids brought us the got you know sent me this in the mail check this out it's a blah 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 dragon for the upcoming blah 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 set that's announced and uh for wizards of the coast and uh, check out the details and this, that, and the other. And they also sent me this. Uh, okay. Okay. Like, that's, that's. I mean, good for Nerdarchy. Uh, big big ups to him. Like, I'm not going to hate on, on your grind. But, like, we're not getting that sort of similar access with Heroclix. We're not getting a consistent, like, I know I can go to this channel or the other channel and get a consistent drop of early information. Because truth be told, in spite of WizKids having a website, having message boards, having the means to, to communicate to us, they don't. They realistically don't. And they don't feel like they have a responsibility to communicate to us in a direct manner. And so 
for a good part of the time while I'm, you know, getting used to being a dad on a, a more full-time basis and other problems I'm dealing with, I became disassociated with, with Heroclix. Even though I like playing online, the actual product of itself uh, moved me into the opposite of hate, which is indifference. And and some folks will be like, well, the opposite of of, of love is hate. No, 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 no. Love and hate are very close together. You become uh, emotionally uh, very committed to those who you love and hate, whether you want to admit it or not. But those who you're indifferent to, they could die at the side of the ditch and you won't care. And in spite of the amount of time that I put into hero clicks, that's pretty much what they sort of done to me. Now you might say, well, what about your friends? You know, will they stay in their ground? Will they let you down? Yeah, yeah. I mean, friends are different. If if someone said like, hey, would you go to Worlds? Yep. Why would you go to Worlds? Uh, to go hang out, uh, play some battle royales, and maybe and do teams. That's it. That's the that's the only reason. I have an incentive to go to Worlds. I don't care about what's next because WizKids hasn't shown that they care about me as a comp competitive player about what's next. Now you can say, but but Dark Logos, of course they care about you. Did you see the fact that we're having X of Swords? That has nothing to do with me as a competitive player. At all. That has zero buckets to do with you trying to reestablish WKOs. When I know Pokemon, which is more targeted towards children, has a tournament scene already functioning and in full effect, you can't come at me and be like, well, the, the world hasn't fully adapted and blah, 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 blah. Like, no, that's BS. It's just that WizKids is slow. And they're slow to care. And being honest in saying that, there, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that is an important thing to establish. WizKids, you know, they don't care about us. You know, bring in Michael Jackson, you know. And so when you start to understand that, yeah, indifference starts to, to move in. Now you can say, oh, but they are doing this for me to buy. They're doing this other thing for me to buy, but they're doing very little for me to play. They're doing very little for me to play. So 2020, give me a pass on no WKOs. 2021, I could give you a pass for no WKOs, but the fact that you have no WKOs and it's 2022, you have no other side events, okay? Uh, you can say, but my bottom line, you know, player, come on, man. I, I really want to make sure I have my bottom line. Okay, cool. Why why didn't you just sell your Connellys from your store, Wiz Kids? Why didn't you just sell your, 20, not your 2020 and your 2021 Connellys that you made from your own store? And we already know why you didn't because it's... They have all that stuff to, to jiggle the the chins. I won't say the, the other thing I want to say. Jiggle the chins of, of the individuals that run the, the cons so that they can get attention. Because WizKids does more for the attention of the cons and the people that judge those little contests than they do for the player base. And that's been going on for years. That's been going on for years. And, and a person can easily be silenced to that if you're doing your part. You know, if, if I could say like, hey, you're still providing me content. I can understand why you would have some stuff that is targeted uh, towards the cons. But when you're telling me my bottom line, Dark Logos, everything in, in all my little business world would tell me is you need to liquidate stuff, uh, get the money while the getting the money is good before more people get laid off, okay? Uh, not only that, you're seeing your, your dollar depreciate 
and you have, I mean, not depreciate, your, your buying power with the dollar is decrease, decreasing and you have hyperinflation and everybody's afraid of stagnation. Now, I know some folks be saying, you just said, you just spoke in tongues. That's okay. All, all I pretty much said is, yo, stuff's getting more expensive. The, the sooner you have your dollar when stuff is getting more expensive and the sooner you spend it, the better you are. And the more you have in that warehouse, the worse off you are. Okay? Being 100. Okay? And that sort of leads me to the the other, you know, red flags that I've had with Wiz Kids and then folks in Phoenix that would be like, oh, here we go. He's, he's about to talk about it. Okay? One, if you know that there is international tensions going on and your number one supplier of your product or AKA your only supplier of your product is tied down uh, and has multiple lockdowns and has had historically multiple shutdowns. Okay. When, when you start talking about Chinese New Year, Chinese New Year is, is not something that you know, oh yeah, it, they just sometimes lock everything down. No, they they consistently shut everything down. You know, no matter what year it is, it could be the year of the dog, the dragon, the rat. There, everybody's going to shut everything down. Okay, but what happens is this: what you you are able to adapt with kids by knowing when to get product released and produced because of this shutdowns. Okay, so then the pushback that I have is, all right, WizKids, you know that it's going to be a delay. There's going to be massive delays from you getting stuff from China. Why are you announcing stuff like it's going to be on time? And you've dealt with them for over two years, in these last two years, nothing's come out on time? Why, why are you pretending? You know, why are you lying, you know, to us and yourself like that's the worst kind of lying when you lie to yourself okay there therein is a consistent problem you could go back to jlu jlu got pushed back fantastic four got pushed back house of x got pushed back almost every release since covid has gotten pushed back and if i'm whiz kids or hell if I'm any supplier in the hobby uh, genre right now that I'm selling, you know, little miniatures to anyone, I'm not announcing anything, anything until I have it in hand. Now, some of you might say dark logos. That's real easy for you to say because you're you're that's not your job. And, uh, you know, it's hard out here for a company. I mean, hey. Hey, I, I get it. I get it that it's hard out here for a company. I mean, brother's looking for, for new employment. You know, I, I understand that. But at the same time, it's, you know, shame me once, fool on, you know, fool on me, shame me twice, you know, fool on me still, shame me three times, you won't shame me again, you know, to completely uh, butcher the George W. Uh, Bush quote. Um, but the, the issue comes back is we, we know firsthand that China is going to be slow. And we also know secondhand that, Hey, with everything that's going down right now, uh, they're not in a good position with their zero, zero COVID policy. And, and, you know, folks are going to be like, well, yeah, there's a zero COVID policy, but what does that have to do with anything? It's in Shanghai right now. Go, go look up the voices of April. Go uh, watch the, the channel ADV China. Uh, go watch the channel China Insights. Okay. And you can go see what's going on in China. Because understanding the business of China is understanding the, the future of business. Or, or in, in when I mean the future of business, I mean your next two to three months, okay, of business. 
And so it's really important to, to have a good grasp of that before you go, go further. All right. Uh, but with the lockdown in Shanghai, there, there is something that's happened. There's two key things that are happening that are that's going to cause major problems in the future. And again, it doesn't matter where the plant is. Doesn't matter where the plant is, if the plant is in Ganzhou, Shanghai, or some other province. Okay, what matters is the rich people of China are now starting to understand what's going on in China. And the richer foreigners that are in China understand that their little special privileges have gone away under these lockdowns and that they're treated like cattle too under China. Okay. And so now what does that mean? Where does that, that put your average worker in China? That means that you're going to start seeing brain drain. You're going to start seeing people with any means whatsoever try to, to GTFO out of China. Okay? All right. That is a reality. Okay? The next thing that you're going to start seeing as a, as a huge deal is that your average laborer is stuck and that that full-on patriotism that's there is going to start to be questioned and so you're you're eventually going to deal with some form of instability in china and you know and those some people will say like mm, that's not going to happen i'm like no that's coming so whiz kids if there's instability in china whether it's from the, 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 the throne of Xi Jinping or a, a potential revolution on hand or COVID, what happens to our game? What, uh, and I know the D&D players probably haven't asked themselves this if it, because they don't have to because there's other competitors uh, to whiz kids for many. So they don't have to think about this, which is what happens if there is no more uh, whiz kids products. What if they can't get stuff out for six to eight months? What happens to whiz kids? Where is their other factory? And, and I'll, I'll give you a hint. Uh, it, it rhymes with uh, Biro. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the number of other factories they have. It rhymes with Biro. Okay. And understanding that, from a business perspective, I know some people be like, did you listen to Scott Crampton? I'm like, I got I got some some courage because uh, I had a friend of mine tell me that Scott was talking about this. Uh, I sort of kept some things to myself lately because I started to realize uh, I, I got off Facebook. Primarily, I was arguing with people that I didn't necessarily care their opinion about. So why am I even talking to them? Uh, uh, about things outside of hero clicks when I don't care what they think outside of hero clicks and it, it was a huge wake up call but sort of going back when when all is said and done NECA and by proxy of WizKids has bound themselves to China now you could come back and say well that's not a big deal. A whole lot of other companies bound themselves to China. And I will be honest with you, and you are seeing how their stocks are performing now. Like real talk, you could not hide that. You could hide that for last year and the year before, but you're having a problem hiding that now when you have that, that COVID zero policy. It becomes a lot harder to hide that now when um you know you have shut down production okay like some of these these results that we're seeing in the stock market recently some folks will be like well oh, our tech stocks didn't do well that's part of it but a other good part is good amount of our production is in china and when you start baking in potential profits and the loss of profits and what does that mean for the future and then go into food insecurity mm, you start to understand like all of a sudden yeah the world isn't as as civilized as you think there's there's a lot of shortcuts that have have gone on 
that's about to destabilize the world like big time. And so going back, if by chance what a lot of people predicted in, in the military industrial complex was that Russia was going to invade uh, Ukraine and then China was going to invade Taiwan at the same time. What would have what would happen to whiz kids? I, I want to give you a moment to think because they have a number of factories outside of China that rhymes with bureau. Okay, what happens to whiz kids? What happens to DECA? Considering that a majority of their profits as a company come from whiz kids. It's a good. It, you don't have to be a rocket brain scientist to figure out what will happen or better yet, what's next, because it's blatantly obvious what's next. They go under, they liquidate the inventory that they have, pray for the best, see if they can scramble for another supplier. And if not, WizKids gets sold to another company or, and this is something that we would have to just accept the game goes under and whoever the, the licensure is uh, retains their license and they get it uh, to sell to or license to another company. Which means your future product may or may not be backward compatible, blah, 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 yakety smackety. All the stuff that we dealt with before uh, when NECA initially bought the game. For some people that aren't aware of that long history in the way back when uh, when fire was a new magic upon man's uh, uh, arms and, and lips. You know, we, we, we held our fire sticks close to our breasts so that we can endure the cold. Okay, uh, I, I am the elder one in, in this game. Uh, I have seen the dark lords rise. I have seen the saviors come and also slain. And yet here I remain. Uh, the, the one elder to me is the, the Scott to the Crampton, the Cram Company. Uh, so feel free to uh, yield to his knowledge over mine. But, uh, you know, uh, going away from, you know, the, the, the sugary sweet words. Okay, what happens if China becomes enemy number one uh, of the United States due to military conflict? And some people be like, that's not possible. I'm like, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention to what's going on in the Pacific for the last two years. You haven't been going, you haven't paying attention to Australians conflicts and, and politics with China. Uh, and I know a lot of my friends will be like, but my allies and my NATO and my this, that and the other. And I'm like, okay, you say that now. You, you say my NATO now, you say my, my politics now, my friends now, and all this other stuff. But once it comes down to uh, a head-on conflict with China um, and Australia is the, the spark behind it, are you willing to pay full price for your goods? Because you will no longer be dealing with uh, discount Chinese labor. Okay? Like, and if your answer is, my household could not afford 80% uh, of the products if I had to uh, afford to buy it if American workers made it. Then you will come to soon understand what the EU is about to understand uh, with uh, Russia. Is that you shouldn't have been doing business with them if you were scared of them. And then even more so is the cost of you doing business with them is that you can't leave them. And that's the honest truth. Uh, and most people do not or never were taught uh, or do not know or never were taught uh, the basis of modern economic theory uh, in terms of, of, of international trade. And the idea of modern economic theory with international trade, and I say modern because you can make an argument that we're in a postmodern or a post-postmodern uh, mood or whatever, but it, it, it was uh, economic diplomacy through the fact of a diversification of specialties between the nations so that 
you have an economic world peace or at least a not an escalation to World War III because if, if one country shuts down goods and services, it literally starts to cripple everyone else. So you have no incentive economically to start World War III because you yourself will starve and along with everybody else. Either you're going to starve for food or you're going to starve for technology or you're going to starve for minerals. There is no nation on earth that is both techno technologically secure, energy dependent, and minerally dependent. And, and other and another and sorry and naturally raw resource dependent. While the U.S. has a lot of diversity, we are not dependent. We are not self reliant on on all of those fronts. Okay, we are not. Okay, there are minerals for your technology uh, for for my Apple uh, fanboys out there. There's minerals uh, in rare earths in your phones that are running low and that we will have to go to Afghanistan. Yes, yes, I know a lot of folks didn't know that. We're gonna to have to go to Afghanistan to get in the future, okay? That's that's 100% coming. Like that's not new. That's stuff that we've known since like 2005, okay? They just didn't expect that the iPhone was gonna be as popping as it was. That these these smartphones and whatnot weren't weren't going to be as popping as they were, because that's that's your big uh, consumption for your electronics, not laptops like it used to be. So now we're we're facing you know new realities, and I, I'm sort of saying this more sort of to give the viewer the the 50 or 25 of you all that are left that'll watch this video uh, the prep of what's coming and why this game while mechanically is is getting better and is mechanically diversifying and is dealing with complaints that we've had in the game 10 years ago finally about uh not screwing over collectors and giving an advantage to collectors which is what legacy cards do um we we are seeing we, we, this is the beginning of the destability of the instability Anybody that believes otherwise is very naive and does not know what's going on on a bigger scale. And I know Scott sort of brought up the fact of, look, China is an ally to Russia. They are. And if you go in, into the history of China and Russia, they have a mixed history. OK, they have a very complex history. Uh, they're, they're frenemies, okay? But we do know that China is running their economics and their, their bank trans... I mean, sorry, not China. Russia is running their economics uh, and their transactions through China now. So we put all those sanctions on Russia for what? Are you going to sanction China? Are you really going to start the pop off are, are you going to to raise the dragon and and give it an incentive uh to full-on fight knowing that uh your your powers that be have already sold you out to to said overlords no nah, that's not happening you're you're not going to unless something china gets really aggressive as long as china doesn't attack taiwan we'll pretend that china isn't We'll, we'll pretend that China is a threat, is not is not a threat, even though they are. So I, I sort of present to you, the listener, um, the following theorem. And it is this. For what is to come is WizKids in a position to survive the next three years? Then you could take it a step further and ask yourself the following question. Is WizKids in a position to provide me services that I will actually use? And are they catering to, to my demographic of player 
right now? And does it look like they're going to be in the near future? And if your answer is like, uh, no, I don't think to, to any of those questions, I want you to rethink the economics of investing in whiz kids, whether it be your time or your money or your energy. I would highly encourage you to, to think of something else. Now, some people say if the company goes over, goes under, then there's no more hero clicks. And then I'd be like, that's not necessarily true. I have a bunch upstairs I can play. There's a bunch that you can play. The, the whole idea of uh, legacy cards, in all honesty, makes it so that you could have an established third party uh, group running sanction events for years, years. And I know some people will be like, well, why is that? They, WizKid sells, there, there's a Wolverine, no joke, for almost every price value. I mean, not price value, for point cost value. Okay? There is a Wolverine for every point cost value, just about now. So guess what? You can easily legacy card any Wolverine you want. Give them whatever trait you want. Give them whatever is going on in the comics. It, it does not matter. You could do it. You could do it for Batman. You can do it for Superman. You can do it for Wonder Woman. Heck, because we've already have. Okay? Now, I know some folks after this is like, so you are completely anti whiz kids because of the China thing. No, I already said at the beginning, I'm indifferent. But I, I have learned this. If I go to Worlds and play, and I'm going to play in sig singles, guess what? I'm not going to, I'm going to buy my team straight up. I wouldn't have spent thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars on buying empty packs and buying random singles for potential meta combos. If my, if I have a teammate and they're like, man, I really need this piece and I'm in a good position, I would buy it for them. But if you want me to go out and buy booster after booster after booster and buy brick after brick after brick, though those days are done. Hell, the me buying REVs, and I'll just say that, have been over for years. It's been over for years. Just due to the lack of value that they provide. So... If if I was able to, you know, talk before Zoran and he didn't try to strangle me like Bart did Homer um, or anybody else in that whiz kids neck of family, the first thing I would say is, what what am I as a competitive player other than a, than a pay pig? What am I to you other than a pay pig? And I know some people will say that's a bit antagonistic point of view, but. Again, uh, other games have proven that they care about uh, their player base. Um, WizKids hasn't. Other, other games are active in doing things and have in-person events or are trying to do things to cultivate their player base and talking to their player base. WizKids hasn't. I got members of that, that on my team who play Pokemon. And you know what? I'm able to see more communication going on about Pokemon than I did about WizKids. And the only time WizKids wants to talk to me is when they want me to buy the new set. So again, here's my question. Here's my God honest question to WizKids. What value do I have other than the fact that I give you money for the set? If the answer is you have value, then my next question comes in is, how are you showing me that I have value? As, as, a, as a great teacher once taught me when dealing um, with pastoral care, don't look at what the folks say, look at what the, the folks do. So 
if I'm looking at what WizKids is actually doing, I, I can make an easy argument that right now they're they're not doing anything for me. They're they're not doing anything for us. So what are you planning on doing? What events do you plan on doing? What events do you plan on unlocking for us in 2023? Okay, how are you going to, to get us back competing together? Does that matter to you? If so, why? How does it matter? What are the incentives that you want to get us to travel and to play and to uh, go off and, and do things? If, if you don't have that planned out, if, if you don't have that planned out, my question is, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? And if you're like, well, we're balanced between all our other projects, then just, just be honest with us. Just be honest with us and say, look, when it comes to WizKids products, Heroclix is not our main focus anymore. It's something that we care about. Our main focus right now is Dungeons and Dragons because it is the largest role-playing game in the world. Uh, it beats out Pathfinder definitively. Uh, and Pathfinder is uh, the second most popular uh, fantasy genre uh, RPG. All other RPGs pair in, uh, sorry, not pair, pale in comparison to Pathfinder and D&D. That's 100% true in terms of market share and exposure, okay? So however many people you thought that you were getting in, in Heroclix and whether it's the casual uh, player included with the competitive, it, it is a joke in comparison to what we're getting in our D&D turnout. If, if you're 100 and just say that, yeah, some folks will be pissed off, even though it's true. But at least you got the truth. At least you know, hey, I'm a side chick. D&D is the main chick. Occasionally, uh, WizKids is going to come come by, uh, try to give me some love, uh, you know, drop 100 on the nightstand, and then keep it moving. At least you know where you stand, okay? At least you know where you stand. With what's going on, it's, it's like being the side chick and then being told, I'm going to marry you someday. <laughs> you, know? Like, you, you know, like that's that's 100 percent like what's getting what's what's being done right now. So I, 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 I I'm, I'm going to wrap it up and and I'll wrap the wrap it all up saying the following. OK, the truth is. WizKids needs to make it clear what is the focus. They need to make it clear how much energy are they actually going to put into us. Okay. They need to make it clear what's their, their point for competitive. Regardless of what you, you say. What are you doing for product? What's, what's your plan to deal with the conflicts that most of us have with China? Now, I know some folks will be like, hey, support the Ukraine. All right, you say support Ukraine, uh, WizKids, and if WizKids says that, okay. But, but here's my follow-up question. When we know China's supporting Russia, are you really supporting Ukraine? And I say that honestly if you're buying any goods made from China. Knowing what we know now, okay, you're pro-Ukrainian and you're against what Russia is doing, but are you against, you know, how they're funneling money now? Now you can say, hey, uh, China's not invading uh, Russia. I don't have a problem. I mean, not invading Ukraine. I don't have a problem with that. They're not the direct aggressor. That's fine. You can have those ethics. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not going to argue with you uh, over on your ethics, okay? 
But I am sort of pointing out, like going back, that causes some issues. Then you, you go in, it's like, hey, we're raising booster prices. Okay, why? Well, inflation. Well, it's okay, so inflation. Okay, why else? Well, uh, our pro we, we need to make up our profit loss. Okay, cool. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not going to hate on you. But but here here's the next thing. If, if you dump China, how much are the boosters going to go up? Be transparent. I, I think a lot of folks won't want to hear that either. So that we need to know, like, the real cost of this. Because you can't be like, oh, I want everybody to have benefits and a union and get paid and have above minimum wage. Okay, are you willing to pay the implications of that? And if the player base says no, okay, what then? And with Dungeons and Dragons, um, you want to be careful. You really, really want to be careful with dealing with the Dungeons and Dragons people. Uh, because they, they got a lot of politics going on. And whether it's the, the orc thing or several other elements that are going on right now. You really, really want to be careful with the Dungeons and Dragons people. And the last thing you want, and I'm not saying this in, in me threatening them. I'm just saying this having watched some stuff lately. Okay. Uh, you, you don't want to be on the wrong end of the modern politics with the D&D &D groups. I'm just saying. It's, it, they, they will brigade you. Like they, they, they will straight brigade you. You'll, you'll, you'll hate your life afterward where you, you don't want to make products anymore. Um, so I'm being 100. Like you don't want to be on the wrong side of the, the quote unquote D and D crowd. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of problems there. Whatever you think is, is the most toxic dude in hero clicks. It's, it's nothing in comparison to what toxic people in D and D can do. So um, I, I present all of this just one sort of saying, like, what, what's happened? Um, two, does, it, does this mean that you're quitting hero clicks? Mm, not really. But again, like I said before, uh, I, I am in the land of indifference. And that's, that's important to remember. Uh, the only thing that I'm really loyal to in hero clicks is my team and making sure that they succeed and that they have what they need to succeed. Uh, there's a certain level of personal growth that I still desire, but when it comes down to the actual legitimate financials and, and looking at all the stuff that's going on and the decisions HeroClix is making, I'm like, yo, I don't have a business degree and I can see that there's a lot of problems. And that's telling. That's 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 not good where you got uh, you could just say the, the economic filthy casual pointing holes in in your uh, in your team. OK, that's a problem. OK, so uh, I again. Whiz kids, whatever you're doing, because I know you're not listening to me. Um, I know you don't like Scott either because um, Scott will keep it 100. Um, but I think this is a time like you actually need to listen. You need to indicate what your plan is uh, because not doing so is, is I think it's going to put a lot of people into jeopardy, uh, the company into jeopardy uh, and also the future player base of Heroclix in jeopardy because it's from how you act with kids, it's quite clear that you don't have a plan for, for us as competitive players. You don't have... Uh, a desire to interact and talk, use your platforms that you, you built to talk to us. You don't want to tell us the truth about what's going on. And so the only thing that is, is left is for us to be these, uh, these children that uh, spend our allowances on the next hot set because uh, there's my tarot cards, and there's my uh, X-Men. Like, 
realistically, like, why why should we have loyalty? And and again, if you you can't answer that. And, and this is the thing, every brand manager should be able to answer that question. Why am I loyal to your product? Why should I still invest in your product in spite of X, Y, and Z decisions? Why should I continue to think about buying? What does buying do for me as the customer? Okay, why am I continuing to invest what is the what is the great thing that I'm getting uh, from this point on from the product? What do you have planned for me uh, that benefits and improves my life with the product? How are you serving my needs? If you can't answer that, we have a problem. And and again, WizKids at no other point in time has ever been demanded to give us those answers. And I think that's something that they now have to as competitive players. And even if you're listening, you're a casual player. What does that mean? And so anyway, uh, that's that's today's show. Um, I know some folks are like, so you stop by to talk politics and economics to a degree. Yes, because, again, what's what's at stake? OK, there's Rocktober and Silver Age. But is that whiz kids? Answer is no, it's not. It's a third party entity. Uh, then there's potentially Florida. Is that whiz kids? No, it's it's not, and they're not doing anything till I think next year. So uh, again, they're they're not doing anything. Uh, there was House of X, but oh, that got pushed back because of uh, my supply chain, my, my, my supply chain, um, which. Again, I would argue, hey, you, you should only be announcing that you're releasing product once it's in a warehouse. Like, uh, you, you've gotten burned over and over and over again. Um, I was about to make a Richard Pryor joke, and I just realized most people wouldn't know who he is. Um, so, what what's up? Like... There, there is problem after problem after problem after problem and excuse after excuse after excuse that we are supposed to tolerate as customers. Why? And fundamentally, if there was a competitor to Heroclix, would you be acting this way? And the answer is no, you wouldn't. See, like Pokemon and Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! all know that the other three are direct competitors to them. WizKids does not have a direct competitor. And because WizKids does not have a direct competitor, that impacts things. You can see the difference in how they handle the magic. I'm not magic, the D&D community. Because they have direct competitors. So, that that's it for the show. Um... Again, uh, I, I thank you for listening because uh, you don't have to because I'm just spouting a bunch of stuff that you can either uh, feel is uh, SJW uh, drama or uh, or conservative conspiracy theories or uh, oppressive economic theory uh, or, or whatever else. But uh, I, I thank you for, for listening and taking the time to listen. Uh, is there going to be more stuff in the future? Am I going to go over old sets? I don't know. I had somebody say like, hey, there's been three sets and no reviews. Again, I don't know. And I can't. And, and the reason why I say that is I can't say something is good because of a broadcast event, even though broadcast events are good. OK, I, I, I can't say something is bad because it's at the bottom of a broadcast event. Okay, but I can say this. Oh, here's my opinion, what I think is decent. Is that differentiating enough from everybody else that you're listening to? And at this stage, the answer is no. And I have no additional evidence to, to go either other way without either A, me making it up completely 
or B, throwing my teammates, you know, teams under the bus. Like, that's that's sort of where I'm at. And so it, it in part sucks, but until we get some level of competitive events going on that actually matter and there's actual stakes and it moves the plot forward, I don't see a I don't see a point for the show. I don't see a point for me making the show. Um, and I don't want to just be the other voice telling you, uh, go play Thanos, uh, go play Blackheart, uh, go play the, the interstandard meta here, because Attack of the Clones is real. If you all want to hear other stuff about like insights, about being a better player, insights uh, about you know what it takes to to raise a competitive venue or any of that stuff uh put it into the comments below and i'll start working on those things but as for the nature of of hero clicks right now and i i made a video and i deleted it and I, I recorded that video about four times and i deleted it but it comes back is play what you want to play and think it through and you're able to start confronting a lot of the standard meta teams. I'm not saying that you're going to win all the time. I'm not going to say that you're going to beat them. But I am going to say is this. The attack of the clones is real. More so than ever before. I could throw a whole group of a play group under the bus from, from the story I just heard. But I'm not. Um, but... Anyway, like I said, if you want to hear those sorts of things, uh, let me know. And, and even more so, uh, you want to know the impact of Attack of the Clones. Uh, I, I could do a show on that. But anyway, that's it. Thank you all for listening. And remember, we all have to start over sometime.